Um, well, hi, I'm Levi. And um, <coughs> just so that we have some kind of context about this conversation, this session is... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run through a whole lot of things, you know. We'll get there, but that's through the framework. And then what I'd like to do is spend about 40 minutes or 35 minutes or so um, kind of collaborating on some ideas together. So I, I really don't want it to be uh, a big lecture for you. So that's kind of my intent, to make sure I hit some of the things that I, I really wanted to do. I want to make sure I know who you are. Um, would you just, I can see the name tense for the group over there. If you'll take the cards the index cards and turn those into little name tents as well, at least with your first name on it. Uh, would you introduce yourself and then make sure that I, you know, tell, tell us what you teach and, and at which school? Would you mind starting, Nicole? <laughs> Nicole Hall. I'm at Eisenhower Middle School, direct instruction, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade math. Okay, middle school math. Great. Amy? Uh, Amy Price, Eisenhower Middle School, 8th grade science. Great. Donna Cook, Eisenhower Middle School, just recently switched to Tech Ed, but we'll be going back to 8th grade. Okay. And Ella? I, I'm Ella, and I was a fifth grade math, a fifth grade teacher, and did all the different subjects, but I recently became the principal. The principal. Elementary. Okay. Elementary. Great. Um, my apologies. And uh, <laughs> my, good, my condolences. Um, just kidding. Just kidding. All right. Would you mind start, starting us off? Yeah, why not? Okay, okay. Well, we can talk to the principal about that. Or one principal. <laughs> Evie? Yeah, I do um, regular biology, pre AP biology, and AP biology at Eisenhower High School. Okay, okay. I'm Doris Bigler, and I actually teach kindergarten at Pat Henry, and I am the science book teacher, and then I'm helping at the doing a STEM rotation. STEM rotation, okay. Yeah, okay. What was this? You said uh, kindergarten, what was You said science teacher. I have the science club teacher. Science club teacher, yeah, got it. Okay. Um, I'm Catherine. I teach a lot of time. Um, I teach algebra one and AP classes. Um, and I might possibly be changing to middle school or elementary next year. Oh, who knows? Okay. <laughs> Based on your own preference or? Um, we'll see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, um, I'm Levi and I. Uh, work in mathematics and computer science now at the Department of Ed, and um, kind of my approach for this session is to really just kind of start off and say, like, I've been pretty um, frustrated for some amount of time in, in trying to make sense of STEM. And so uh, my counterpart, Tiffany Neal, who's, a, who's a, the science director at the State Department, um, she and I actually, we, we go back a long ways. We've been working together for over 10 years now. Um, but we co-taught a math and science course at U.S. Grant High School. So when I was, when I was a teacher and department chair there, um, she would come in from OU every single morning and we would co-teach a two-hour block course of Biology 1, Algebra 1. And, um, yeah, it was great. And, um, and I'll say just one thing about that. Um, we, didn't, we weren't able to continue it for the next year because um, even though it showed all of the the gains that a school could ever hope for. Um, the school was was still convinced that the only way to improve was test prep. And so they, they shut down what I think was an entirely innovative practice um, and clearly effective um, because of this this kind of rigid belief about what, what actually impacts student learning. And, I, and I, I've become, um, you know, fundamentally convinced that in fact when students are enjoying learning, not entertained, but actually are seeing joy in the learning experience, um, that that is worth fighting for. So meanwhile, um, the, the whole STEM movement has come along, and I think there's a strong overlap in our two goals. My goal is that students see math as useful and purposeful, and that they see science as useful and purpose, you know, these things, and that they, that they have joy in doing that. Uh, in the STEM world, all of the, the momentum behind STEM, I think, is pretty much the same. But kind of accidentally, as STEM has occurred, um, maybe the communication that's happened has left out some of the really important things that, we, that was always implicit in mind, that they were enjoying learning math, right? Or that they were enjoying learning science. So that's kind of what I want to talk to us, you know, to, and have an experience about today, is uh, exploring the, uh, the disciplines of STEM. So what, what's kind of what are the component pieces of STEM, and then how do we pay attention to that? 
uh, and we'll together uh, try to try to create um, maybe some ideas about what this is going to look like. So the 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 uh, big sticky notes I'm going to use in, for an activity in a minute. So um, if you'll hold off, you it's all right if you use yours, Evie. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. Um, so we'll use those for an activity in a minute, but. Uh, hopefully you already know how to get a hold of me, but mostly, you know, Facebook is easy, Twitter is easy. Those are the places I prefer. I spend about 10 hours a week dealing with emails, and honestly, if I can just get that down, contact me on Facebook, and I can respond to you and get to, you know, 4,000 people, and I prefer that. So I'm going to give you just, like, um, a little bit of background first in, some, in a way of thinking about STEM, and then we'll kind of, we'll kind of roll through it. Uh, I want to make sure that you know that this presentation is totally like right now available at okmathteachers.com or at okciteachers.com. It's all, it's there and available. So let's start just by having a little bit of a, a, a conversation. So first I'd like for you to, you know, just kind of contemplate um, what is STEM and how do you know it when you see it. Uh, make your way through that kind of thinking and once you're ready, once you have some ideas in your, in your, eye, in your head, um, you know, maybe write some things down and then also try to come up with a claim which is really, can STEM exist if uh, science or mathematics is, is not present? So those are the two questions. I'll give you about three or four minutes to do a, that alone. Think through this a little bit. Write, write some things down to reflect on this. Make sure to, if you haven't already, make sure you have something written down about your claim and, a, and some kind of a defense for your whatever you're going to claim on this. Social science is something that really gives like history and what it reflecting on the past and all that, but STEM allows you to like actually put work in it and not work, but data behind it and like mm -hmm. a method for investigating. I feel like art is also another way to investigate things. Like mm. when you have your own art show, you have a theme with it, you're trying to like dig into. You don't have an answer necessarily, but you are like 
working really hard to figure out something, and I feel like that's mm -hmm. how I feel about math and science. Like, we don't necessarily have all the answers, but we're like trying to figure out ways to find the answers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, will you write something down about the, the kind of the two big ideas about this investigation and then this point of like like taking on um, challenges that you don't have, you have more questions than answers around, you know? I think that's like essential to what you're, what you're thinking there. Okay, I think we're, we're almost there. I see some of you are, are still working. That's okay. Um, so... Um, I, have a, I have a quick challenge for you, and I'm sorry to do this for you, but do, do this to you. But um, you, you, hope you got something written down, right? A sentence or a list about what, what STEM is and how do you know it if you see it. So what I'd like for you to do now is um, put a star by anything in your list that um, only can happen in a STEM class. Has ever had a chance to do that? I don't have, I don't have anything. Yeah, that can only happen in STEM class. Anybody else? Now, I haven't defined what STEM class is necessarily. What kinds of things? Did anybody start anything? I had already started something, but I didn't. Not my version of STAR? Okay. Okay. Um, would you now star any of the things that you listed that um, that aren't already happening in a math classroom. Okay, so if you have something listed there about what is STEM and how do you know it when you see it, star it if it isn't already happening in a math classroom. Try that for me. It's happening in my math class. <laughs> okay, okay, last, last chance, you know, star anything if it isn't already happening in a science classroom. You're not starting yet? No. Okay. Um, all right. I want to hear from a couple. Um, it's, it appears that Catherine and Nicole may have slightly different opinions on this issue. And I, and I, let's, let's take, let's take this. Why does that not surprise me? Yeah. Let's take this, this uh, tension here and, and just say it out loud, respectfully here. Nicole, you, would you just kind of make your claim? We, we, I gave three opportunities to star things on our list in our description. Mine says collaborative, interactive, and engaging. And you said all those things are already happening. Yes. Basically, they can happen beyond STEM, and they're already yes. happening in math and science. Yes. I've been in her classroom. The students collaborate. They talk together. Uh, it's interactive, I know, because they come to me and they say they like her classroom because it's not just sitting there paper pencil, um, and they're engaged. I've had students who want to move to her science class. I mean, because the other teacher okay. they say, does not teach. Okay, they don't feel as engaged. They don't feel All as engaged. It's book work. So, uh, so I know that it's... Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's happening in uh, but not all. No, it's not happening at all, but in this group right here, I know that it is. <laughs> I see. I see. Catherine, will you kind of make your... your uh, this was I my think. list. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> this is my list. I, I, can, I can only speak about my class, <coughs> especially since I'm like a hermit sometimes and I don't leave enough. But um, I feel like, based on my understanding of... Um, based on where I'm at in my career and like based on kind of... Like, I've had collaborative meetings with my other Algebra 1 teachers, and it's been outrageously helpful, but it's so much like, here's the standard, and, like, um, get kids to master it, and, like, it, in a way that's, like, giving them a bunch of problems, and, like, you know, I mean, it can be, like, engaging, like, maybe, you know, maybe stations or something like that, but, um, like, for me, STEM means investigation, and, like, like, you, you help me with these words, like, we have more questions than answers, and, like, math, for me, is just, like, for example, like, you know, a bunch of these 
formulas and theorems that we came up with where like, we notice these patterns in the world and we just, let's try and make it simple. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like all these like complex patterns in the world, like let's try and make it simple. But I feel like my students never really ask questions besides like, how'd you do that? Yeah. As opposed to like, <laughs> why does this work? Or how does this well, happen? Yeah, I know, my poor kid, <laughs> when they raise their hand, if they say no, I go, why? If they raise their hand and they say yes, I go, why? Why, yeah. why do you think that? I feel like I ask those. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> yeah. but they so, know now yeah. that unless they can, they can tell me why, they know that it's going to happen to them. Right. So they better, I mean, it, you got a 50-50 chance if it's yes or no, you know, so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like. So, so I, let, let me move to the next one. So I appreciate the kind of the sharing on this. So, can, okay, so can STEM exist if science or mathematics isn't present? Did anybody have a, a claim that, that yes or, how about anybody who said yes, it can exist? Raise your hand nice, nice and high. Can STEM exist if science or math, did anybody say yes? some of the stuff that you do in a STEM class, some of the ways that you teach something that it doesn't. But my ultimate answer is no, because then it would just be TE. Oh, okay. It, it feels like maybe there's a, some level of agreement on this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Everybody else said no? Does somebody, can somebody like uh, articulate their claim about why it's a no? Uh, well, she said all you'd have left is TE. I say you wouldn't even have TE left because... No. Because you have to have the math and science <laughs> skills and apply them in order to even be engineering or creating or using technology. Yeah, yeah, that's, there that's isn't even, there isn't even a TE without MS. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's that. yeah. um, that's that. Now let me let me make a a, a, a counter argument and just like help me help you know maybe through your group conversation <laughs> help put me in my place if it's possible. <laughs> I thought engineering was about a design process, and is it not possible? All right. Now I'm going to give you a more focused. Uh, <laughs> clearly, you have opinions on this. <laughs> okay, a slightly more focused uh, question uh, or task here. Um, I thought it was about the design process. What I'd like for you to do is come up with like a tweet-sized response to help me understand. Why, I'm, why I don't have a complete understanding of what engineering is. Are you ready? So, with your table. Tweet size. I mean, it's got to be short, succinct. <laughs> 140 characters. You don't have to actually count, but you know. Yeah. It's all right, Doris. It's okay. Sorry? Um, calculating or calculated? Calculating. My son did engineering too. And I mean, he couldn't design anything without calculating where he was going to put the roads or where he was going to do this or how he was going to build the house, how tall or how short. So engineering was calculating. So, okay. so what I think is very about anything like in kindergarten. There you go. Mm -hmm. you know, or calculating. Okay. Design our fan. Design. But you still have to get work to it. I mean, what's the force? <laughs> 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 to blow it down and what's the best structure? And I didn't realize how many times. How do we get these words? Yeah. Yeah. Thought he, he wanted to be an engineer. Yeah, and he had to get focused. Well, he caffeine. I can't remember right now. Oh, I see. I see. He went to Votech, and he was at the state competition. No, he was at nationals. He was at nationals. And they took the test at the beginning. And it's only supposed to be used for tiebreakers. And he actually won the competition, but then they added in those little scores, and somebody beat him by one point. And they got all the scores and all the cool stuff. And he got second place. And somebody beat him by one point. And they got all of this cool stuff. He got second place. Came back home. Oh. I mean, he's, yeah. I mean, he's, he's in bank. He loves math. Yeah. That's okay. the thing. Math is his thing. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So I, I, I know that we could probably send out a tweet uh, later. So we'll, we'll finesse our tweets uh, at the end of the session. So, um, 
so shoot, well, we lost two folks, and, that, and this is the part where we get to talk about the framework. But um, here's the thing is I think that, I think that we, have to, we have to take time to appreciate that when people are talking about STEM, the initial intent of the conversation around STEM was to, to, to make sure that there was a clear opportunity for integration and application of these ideas. That, that's it. Integration and application. Now, it has turned into something that is like, well, it's a place where our kids should engage or you know, have fun. But I think it's one thing that we all want to be paying attention to is not all classes, because the students are problem solving or engaged or investigating, are necessarily a STEM class. Um, right? You can build. Yeah. So, so often, the descriptions people use to describe what STEM is, and it's not, not meant to it's meant to challenge us here. Um, is it problem solving? Is STEM problem solving? Yeah, but it also could happen in English. And is English all of a sudden doing STEM because they did problem solving? I, I don't think so. They did problem solving. And it may be all about teamwork, but they also did that on the football field. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think football is STEM. Because, you know what I'm saying? Well, they certainly, <laughs> they certainly know what it feels like. Um, so, so I'll, I think my biggest challenge is, and this is, this is to help, my whole thing about STEM is we, as STEM educators, broadly, um, need, a, need a good filter. We need, a good, we need design principles that help us understand what is it that we want to pay attention to, and then how do we also protect against things that are actually distractions. Um, how long are your periods right now? In your 50, 45. You know, so you're getting 45 minutes to do something meaningful with, with kids. And I think, which of us hasn't ever said, you almost can't get squat done in 45 minutes, right? Like, give me a break, right? right? And so one of the things that we have to pay attention to is when we talk about STEM as something separate from the math and the science learning experience, we actually are taking away an opportunity to make our math and science learning experience more complete, more full, whatever this is, right? More engaging, more joyful, perhaps. Wouldn't it be interesting, so Dor Doris, I'm going to pick on you, but just, right. just briefly. So Doris says she's going to do a STEM special. Maybe that's exactly what the school needs, because they need an opportunity to think about science and math as integrated and applied, and they couldn't do it inside, inside the current space. But you know what? Had you taken that 45 or 50 minutes time for the special, excuse me, <laughs> if you took that same amount of time and gave it to the kindergarten teachers to spend, or the elementary teachers to spend now more time in math and science class, they could do those things in their own class. So would they? That's a good, that's the challenge, isn't it? So, I'll say I'll, I'll say that I'll say that um, you guys. So inertia. What does inertia mean in, in in science? Can somebody give me like a some memory of how that works? Kind of. I'll I'll tackle. Huh? Okay, so it's. It's the, the idea, essentially, that an object at rest stays at rest until a force is acted upon it, an object that's in motion. Okay, so, so inertia is this resistance to change um, broadly. And there, are, there have been, I mean, one of my favorite um, philosophers about education in the early 1900s basically said, like, mathematics without purpose is inert. And inert, inert learning has no value. It just doesn't. And that's why, we, that's why some of us make it through school and we hate math. You know those kids. Mm -hmm. And they say, I don't get why, right? They, they have no, it's, it's inertia. We, we gave them something that was in, inert. So the challenge is, as Dora said, but would they? Would they make math or science, if given that opportunity, would they make it something that has momentum in it, it, or creates momentum, let's say? And if the answer is no, then we have something else to ask ourselves. Like, what are we doing here? Yeah. Our kids aren't receptacles. They aren't test machines, even though our society may indicate otherwise. I didn't get here. I didn't come into the classroom and give up a $70,000 a year salary of being a, you know, whatever. I came, I mean, literally, I'm here for kids, and that is it. It's my career. I want to be a professional, but I want my kids to love what they do, not test well. If they test well, that's fine, but they better love what they do. So then I'm a, I'm, I'm a thought, like, uh, thought experiment kind of guy. So what, which is best? Kids who hate math and test well? Kids who uh, test well? No. 
who love math and test poorly, kids who hate math and test poorly, kids who test well and love math. Okay, so all four versions of these two th of these things, right? And frankly, the only real place that I will land on the whole time is that they better love math, mm -hmm. which means I have a way to behave in my classroom as a teacher. I only can filter my decisions through that lens. Usually, if they love it, though, they take ownership. They're going to do it. it usually goes the way. Wouldn't that, right? I mean, I don't. I don't. Well. I actually don't disagree. <laughs> um, yeah, we have. I was gonna. I was gonna. I, my kids like my class. I mean, they they enjoy my class. They don't test well. So we'll. But, I mean, I've got I've got special kids. Yeah, we'll so, talk. Well, we I mean, can talk about. That's the thing. They when you set the bar here, they reach your bar. Yes. Is what I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our our state yeah. has gotten where that. Yeah. The way that they're doing the test aren't testing actually. They're we're teaching yeah. a test. On I mean, I I've had. I mean, yeah. I I'm thrilled when I see my. I couldn't do that. I'm just yeah. My you know, my intellectually disabled kids when I see that they've scored. Well, I mean, like a point or so from actually passing, I'm just like, oh my gosh, you know. If they but they still didn't pass. Though, they still didn't pass. That's, <laughs> well. yeah. you know what I'm yeah. that's right. That's right. Which, progress. which actually the, the new and age. That's right. all I tell them is that's all we're looking for is progress. Yeah. And, did and, you learn something more today than you did yesterday? Right. right. And so. finally, the A through F actually will account for that. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So right. even if they don't <laughs> bump up into a new level, um, so. Here's the thing, is, is we can Google STEM, and you can find out what STEM is by looking at pictures, by reading blogs. And, and what I think is, by and large, it's an inaccurate uh, view of what STEM is, especially based on just our, our brief conversation here. So we have, a, we have a, a way of thinking about this that I really want to play with, and it's, and it's basically just to treat each of the, each of the four disciplines as, sounds like a bird's in the room, huh? <laughs> um, to treat each of... <laughs> Who's, who's tweeting? Come on. Um, the way to think about STEM, at least initially as a, as a framework, is to treat it like a soundboard. So on a soundboard where you can turn up the treble or turn up the bass, let's say, or turn them down, we have this kind of idea about, uh, of what that looks like, right? Can everybody imagine turning something up or down? So now we can kind of use that same thing with the, the STEM framework. And... Uh, this is a little bit hard to see on this uh, projector over here, but we have this idea that for each one of the four disciplines, they, they at least have these kind of three um, levels. And I'm not saying this is, per, you know, there's probably like a, an in-between, but just for conversation, we just use them as uppercase, lowercase, and underscore. Okay, so, so the idea for science is, um, and there are, we try to bold the things that really are important here. So for my science teachers in the room, you know, your, your performance expectations actually pretty well tie in together the content and the practices, right? That was the, that was the idea about how that was designed. Um, and so if you're engaging in a meaningful way in your performance expectations, that's great news. And if it's on grade level, you very well may be doing capital S science. Meanwhile, it's so easy, and I think we all have experienced this. In fact, so often our textbooks tell us to do it this way, is that we, make sure we separate the content from the practice. So we introduce a whole lot of content that's by and large inert, and then hopefully we try to build momentum with some activity later, right? So these two things tend to be separate. And um, when done, especially outside of a science classroom, when we look at like projects and activities that are happening, so often we see that the science is actually off grade level. So this is a case for the folks in the room who know. Um, so like, um, you know, we might talk about something about fl like floating boats. Really young kids doing floating things, right? And how does, what, what are the scientific concepts around floating and buoyancy and density? And to understand density, you have to understand mass. And to understand density and mass together, you have to understand atoms and molecules and these things, and it turns out kids don't have access to that. So the way that we, the way that we introduce these things, if we're not careful, we do it completely out of the learning progression, which actually feels good that our kids are doing like high school math or middle school math, but if we're not careful, they actually may leave thinking something entirely different about how this stuff works than, it, than, than reality. So we really got to pay attention to this. I think this is actually one of the biggest risks um, in STEM activities is accidentally going outside of the grade level. And, and not on the learning inside the learning progression. Now, technology is challenging, and this is this is a place that I'm starting to take a, a larger and larger stand on. Um, 
technology, this is, this is, we developed this, by the way, after we, we did it, we pulled in a whole lot of research, and, and we'll, we, I can share that research with you, but from the technology education community, they lean to these two, these two things right here, created and operated, and it's purposefully. Now, what you, what you want to make sure that you understand is that this is not a PowerPoint presentation. This is technology like, um, in my next session, we'll look at Desmos. This is, this is technology like um, building, um, you know, some kind of a spreadsheet that can help you calculate uh, an expected result after doing some kind of an activity. So the, the kind of analytical, predictive, or descriptive statistics that you might be able to do. Um, there's a lot of stuff that happens here, but what it certainly isn't is it's not related to kind of digital, digital literacy stuff. It's not related to digital presentations and things like this. It's, using Google Docs has no place here. Right? Using PowerPoints and Word space, has, it's not on this thing. So we always have to remember that, and we'll, we'll talk about this more. Um, even if you operate it, so even if I have like a, a robotics thing and I had no, no programming, I can operate that and have to do some thinking inside of that and explore that. Like it's feasible that I can get a lowercase t out of that. Okay. Engineering, this is the one that kind of hit me the hardest when we started looking at what the National Academies of Engineers said about what engineering is. Uh, and this is my kind of tweet size version is that it turns out engineers believe that they are both... Um, they are a, a way of, essentially a way of, um, like a concept, content all on their own, and a process. So their, their process, well, most of us are familiar with a design process, but if you aren't engaging in, and I like, you, Nicole was saying calculating the design, I'll, I'll say calculate, ca having calculated design, so being able to do some work and then being able to, um, so, I, I, so a lot of people will do um, building STEM activities, where you build it once, try it, build it, try it, build it, try it. Right? And actually, it turns out like there's a version of STEM that's way more interesting, and it's don't build until you've done every single thing within your capacity to predict what's going to happen. And the interesting thing isn't anymore getting the best or the highest capacity or the tallest tower or anything like this. It's actually having the most accurate guess about what the capacity will be. Like, simple change, right? But all of a sudden, the design process isn't about guess and check and build and fell and all this kind of stuff, which is what we kind of think that it is. It's about paying attention to the variables, using that information to make a good prediction. Well, I've, I've seen a, a, Donna, I don't remember if you've seen this one already, but we've seen an activity that's really popular where kids will make foil boats, and then whoever can hold the most pennies on the foil boats before it, before it sinks wins. By and large, it's, I mean, it's an interesting activity. It's, it's compelling for a student, but as an engineering design activity, it's absolutely crummy. Because there isn't an opportunity for the students to take time to, to understand what's happening in the system and then make predictions out of it. So what we would do is we'd have a couple students, like my, my redesign is pretty fast, have everybody give it a go. Like you only get one build to start off. And then your goal is to, under, is to like now do like a, a, a best guess at the failure point of a boat of this size or something like this, right? So that we would say, like now we have a different question to ask, right? Is to the whole point is find, finding out the failure point. That's different. And um, this idea that we have, if we have to have science and math concepts utilized, that is like pr pretty prominent here. And this is, this is one of the places that I like to make a distinction between what STEM may be and what arts and crafts may be. If you show me ever something and you claim that minimally it's engineering and there is not a place to point to the math and the science, I will be the first one to say, hmm, don't, don't spend our time on that. It can, you can spend our time on that if you want to teach creativity in an isolated way or fun and play in an isolated way, but I think we can do it more purposefully. Let's, let's bump that up. So you get the idea. The math one is actually pretty similar to the science one. We try to parallel those two things, but it plays out the same way. Every, every um, time that I would plan a lesson with Tiffany, no offense to Tiffany, she, she's heard me say this, she would say, look at this great lesson. It's going to be all this kind of fun, and, and here's the math. I would say, Tiffany, that's, that's middle school math at best. Maybe it's elementary math, but we're teaching algebra one here, and that doesn't count. What you're calling math, I call arithmetic, and it just isn't a part of what we're trying to teach. So if you are finding yourself in a conversation about STEM, you have to, you have to be a defender of the disciplines. 
And you have to ask yourself the question. I mean, not everyone has to be perfect this way, but the question has to ultimately be, how do I turn each discipline up? So, again, okmathteachers.com, STEM framework at the end, and you'll find it. You'll find a whole blog post that we wrote about it, this presentation, and all that kind of stuff. So here's the question I want to spend the time on. I mean, maybe we can ask, maybe we can take, actually, let's start there, a couple of clarifications. Does anybody have a, a clarification question about how the STEM framework works? Make sense? Everybody's feeling kind of good about it? Um, so here's what I want to get done today. Did you get it written down? Here's what I want to get done. If you had to plan a STEM lesson right now, what would you do differently? And, and what I want to have happen is I want those things, like as we, as we get it more and more figured out, I want us to build um, a really straightforward planning guide for this. Like a first stab. This is, like I'm actually bothering you guys, and then ultimately I'll end up taking credit for it all on my own. Um, but I want to know, like, what, is a, what, what should we do if we have the SIM framework in mind? What's our planning guide? What are the, what are the essential questions we should ask ourselves to make sure that we do it right. And I think we'll be able to turn those same questions into reflection questions, is the thinking. So, um, I, what I'd like for you to do is start, you know, brainstorming together. You can start on your note cards. I have some more note cards. And, and by the end, um, we're going to see if we can kind of group them up and have a couple big ideas that go onto our, on our big sticky notes that say, here are the things that really are the question that we're going to ask ourselves when we're planning this stuff. So I'm gonna, let's start with about five or so minutes, six minutes, just brainstorming at your table. Get all the ideas that you can out on, a, on something about what you would do differently as you plan or what you should pay attention to.
Yep. Yeah, if you're going to plan. Do you guys have your ideas pretty well then? Okay. Okay. So Nicole and Amy, maybe I can, if I could ask, have you guys do a second, another part of this question while they're working on the E. <laughs> um, so back to the first question, which is like, how do you know a good STEM lesson if you see it? Could you make a couple, I mean, we got this, these things here. Or maybe how do you plan a good le STEM lesson? I don't know, there's, some, there's a question here that I want to know. Like, what do we pay attention to that helps us know if we're going to get it right or wrong? Is it is it only is it all covered here? Or are there other things that we should pay attention to? We guys think through that a little bit, and I guess is it. it yeah. Okay. So are you are you are you saying like when if, if the kids leave the classroom and they want to know more? They go out on their own. I mean, once we've done this, I think it's a good lesson if they come back to me and say, okay, uh, and they did something more. That's what I consider. Right. Okay. Oh, so this is a nice, this is like a reflection, a way of approaching it from the reflection side. So, like, after the lesson, what kinds of things would you expect to happen if you know you did, if you did it right? Or, Could, or, maybe, or, or when the kids want to keep doing it. Okay, so it's like in, inside the lesson and after the lesson. Can you just like try to brainstorm a few of those ideas and let's see if we can see if that brings us to another uh, another part of this conversation. Okay. We're more about Make it come back for them. Well, and, and not necessarily, you kind of know what you want them to know, but you have to, I've, I've tried to get away from this, you're going and going, okay, do step one, do step two, mm -hmm. do step three. Mm -hmm. It's more like, okay, we're going to study this today, and here's kind of the, you know, what we, we want to know, so now how are we going to do that? And here's some of your, and kind of come up with which area you want to test, and then kind of test yeah. it, and kind okay. of come up with it. I've tried to do more of that, and it's, I mean, it's, it's tough to yeah. do it first. It's yeah. a little bit of time that you have to be okay with that. Okay, so so my next kind of challenge for you guys to think about, are, are, do you guys have internet access on your phones, perhaps? Um, would each of you consider looking up a STEM lesson? Like, just find some STEM lesson somewhere. Mm -hmm. And only one of them is the one that you need to talk about, but I think it would be best if you all looked for something. And then I'm curious, like, just find a STEM lesson and, see, and say, like, with your group, is this actually a STEM lesson? What, what would we evaluate it as using the framework? What would we do to improve this lesson to like turn up the different things? Can you guys go there? Everybody's going to look. You can, so and as soon as you, yeah, look up something separate. See if you can find something that's worth doing as the team. Um, it can be in specific to your area, like Doris. Maybe we can find a, 
Yeah. Early L early L major. Yeah. So it's harder with math. I, I'm a science person, but I think it would be harder for some of this with math. I mean, Don and them, you're kind of talking to the choir. Do you realize that? But we mm-hmm. all kind of <coughs> teach each other. I teach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we kind of use what I'm saying. Sure. And this whole table and us have been working on that thing for like almost a year with, and we've been to like all the holdings. Yeah, and sure. And I've seen him like six times now. So. Yeah, isn't he good? Yeah, right. Well, it takes time. He's 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 a a well of information. <coughs> Would you guys end up with your descriptions? Do you mind if I? Okay, so now I'm going to keep you guys on this one just for another part of this question. So remember how we we earlier made a list of some things and we said some of those things can happen outside of the math and science classroom uh, or outside of STEM altogether? So part of my question is the other side of that conversation. Can you have a STEM lesson where the students haven't done those things that were on our initial list about problem solving and teamwork and things like this? And I, I, I feel like there's a, I would like to you guys like to see if you guys can make a claim about that in addition to these questions. Some, what is the, what's the student experience outside of the disciplines that we should also be paying attention to, if any? Mm-hmm. That's, that's a real world. Yeah, and a lot of them, from their personal experience, are like, totally dry. Did you guys find totally a lesson? Dry. It depends. I'm not, but I know what I'm Okay. Okay, well, you know what? Why don't we do that? Hey there. So, why don't we start with this one, then? Would, would you be willing to share... I mean, I know this is a little bit vulnerable here. Share share the idea, and then let's kind of try to evaluate it with the STEM framework, and then kind of ask how do we how do, how if possible can we upgrade some of the pieces of it? And then maybe we'll come to Doris next. Would you be willing to share an idea that you've had for lower elementary after Evie? I'm always willing to share. All right. Would well, you kick us off? Sure. Okay. And okay. We've only got a couple minutes. Hey, not bad. You doing right? No. Yeah. Good. Good. Well, we're looking. When they get a break, there's water and snacks in there. Oh, good. Okay. Great. Well, we're just tackling STEM, so uh, I think you probably saw the STEM. Yeah, that's all. Boom. We'll have it. I think we'll have it solved in a minute. Um, so I think you probably saw the framework at the Governor's STEM Summit. Do you, were you able to stay for that session? I don't remember. So um, it's the one where we use the the uh, soundboard. Yeah, and the small and the camera. You got it. So we ran, we kind of ran through that, and then, and right now we have a few things going on. So we have some kind of planning and debriefing work that's happening in the, this table. So they're kind of saying, what are the essential questions that you should ask yourself when planning a STEM lesson? And then they're saying, they're saying, and how do we debrief that properly? Like, what, what are the things that we should, that we may have noticed in that lesson about the student experience that we should pay attention to? Uh, they're um, sharing kind of like STEM activities or lessons, and then asking how do you upgrade it? How do we turn up these things and uh, try to try to evaluate them? So it's a little bit different work, but cool. yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, free time, right? <laughs> yep, it's, it's good. Well, I like, you know, I of course I appreciate Lance and, and Megan a lot. And, uh, I kind of wish it had rained today. Exactly. Oh, we don't want to be outside. We'll be at this dim thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 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 All right. Exactly. We'll All right. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Okay. So, um, like during the lesson, mm-hmm. when I notice that a lesson is going really well, I notice the kids are the ones that are they're in their groups and they're discussing what it is we're doing and kind of arguing but not like being mean yeah. Yeah. with each other debating, um, debating yeah. um, with each other and all I'm doing is walking around and enjoying it really yeah. I mean that to me that is that means I'm doing a good job um, okay when they bring up previous lessons that they 
I did a making connections across life. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to go back to that other one because okay. there's a there's an idea about that which is I've heard a, I've heard a really interesting question asked which is can, essentially can you hide during this learning experience and um, which I love being able to ask kids that and I think that's part of what you're paying attention to in a in a class that has a lot of kind of debate and argumentation. Mm -hmm. Um, you don't, you can't hide very well in that class if it's if it's done well, right? Because it, it's happening in small groups, yeah. and you know. So I like paying attention to that. If a kid can hide out in your classroom, um, we got to be we got to be asking some questions about if we if we've created a, that experience that's pro appropriate. I mean, I'm sure in high school too, but especially in middle school, it's all it's not ever want to do is just. Just, just disappear. Yeah, and so then what do we do to make sure that we're, you know, kind of protecting them and then paying attention to them and incorporating them, you know? I've got one student in particular who's amazing at drawing. He talks to no one yeah. ever. Um, I put him in different groups when we do stuff mm -hmm. and encourage that group to choose him as, yeah. as the artist for yeah. whatever it is they're designing and drawing out or whatever. Um, and that seems to have helped because then they're all complimenting him on how great a job he's doing. So he's, seen, he's being valued by the by his peers and I think and by you. And, yeah. and I think that that helps him. He's actually he does talk in group. Yeah. He did at the beginning of the year. That's good. He said three words to me, and every time he said something to me, I literally nearly fell over. I didn't even know what. I, I was like, like yeah. what? <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Oh, that's tough. Yeah. I have no idea, but I go by my greatest papers. You know, yeah. I talk, yeah. I talk to him every single day. Yeah. Every single day. Yeah. Yeah. Second year with him. Oof. Would it be okay? Oh. He was failing his other math class. Yeah. Well, it may, may be. Good. Good. Well, would it be okay if we bring our conversations together? Are you guys about somewhere? So, okay. We only. <laughs> wait. Oh, no. We're ending at 10 30. Oh, it is 10 30. It's almost 10 30. Okay, I was thinking it's in 35, so... Uh, all right, well, I have, like, seven minutes of reflection questions prepared. Um, um, okay, so so a couple things. What would I do if I were at a district like like yours? Like, where I have this, this you know, you're a small group, but as somebody already said, like, you're the chorus, <laughs> right? So, okay, so maybe maybe you didn't hear something today that was just totally brand new, but, but hopefully what you heard is a song that you, you can sing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and you say, yeah, okay, I, what am I going to do now? Uh, let me make a couple recommendations, okay? Money, time, and energy flow to STEM, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, if a group like this wanted to, they should be saying, in which cases is that worth, worthwhile? And, and you have a place to begin. You have, well, it better, if we're going to call it STEM, we need to ask ourselves, in which cases do we call it STEM? Is a biology class STEM, or is only an integrated course STEM? One that needs to be stated. You're, you're, right? It's got to happen. Um, are we going to invest our time, money, and energy into things that effectively turn these things up, or are okay with things like this? You've you got to decide, and it needs to come from you. Um, and you also have to say... For my science experts, this is anybody who teaches science, so I'm talking about my K-5 people and my, my secondary certified folks. My science teachers, they ought to know how to turn up the S, which means they have to know what it means to teach the, kind of this both and of content and practices on grade level. They better know it deeply. So there's, there's a question of time and investment and energy for my science people. And for my technology people, if somebody isn't helping me think about this, how can I do that? I better be making sure that somebody is, is helping the group think about that, if we want it, right? If we're okay with having a lowercase t or an absent t, and that's your version of STEM, it's okay with me. The point is, you just need to make a claim and do it, right? Um, you get the idea, right? You've gotta have, you, you have to find the right advocates for each of these disciplines and the right people who are asking questions about what are we pursuing, if you have somebody who's an advocate for engineering as a matter of the engineering design process, I'm not saying that that's wrong 
but it better be made to be complete. Because that engineering design process alone may only pass for an underscore even. And if done well, could easily be an E, a lowercase e. But you need somebody who's an advocate for the capital E, who's able to advocate for that. This is true all along. Of course, I think that this is, this is critical. And for my math people in the room, I think you have to ask yourself, what are, the, what are the useful integrations and applications of mathematics? And this is where math and science people fundamentally disagree on a couple points. Science people say, sci you know, math is you know, the language of science. So, you know, we, we create this like, link between the two. And they say, well, science doesn't happen without these things so often. And math people, we're a little bit more, you know, we think highly of ourselves. <laughs> Um, STEM, STEM is but one interesting integration and application for mathematics. I could spend all year in a geometry course exploring beautiful ideas about shape and space and patterns and never once touch a bit of one of these three things. Right? I could do an art and algebra one course if you asked me to and I wouldn't touch a bit of one of those other three things. I could, if I was really thinking hard about it, I could probably do Music. I could probably do these things if somebody said to me, and I had that expertise, right? Integrated and applied mathematics has a multitude of, of pathways for it. So my math people in the room, you have to ask the, yourself those questions. In which ways do you choose purposeful, meaningful, exciting, joyful, beautiful, whatever these things are, integrations and applications of mathematics? And if your only vision for that is STEM, I'd say it's narrow still. So my challenge. You've got the STEM framework. You've got a couple ideas about planning. You've got a couple ideas about reflecting. You've got a couple ideas about what are the things that happen beyond the disciplines. Over here, you've got people who are thinking about how to evaluate these and maybe how to upgrade these things. Build a Google document. Like here you got eight people. Build a Google document, share, and say, what do we care about as an organization? Because there are going to be tens of thousands of kids who roll through Lawton Public Schools in a matter of a couple years and they will be necessarily influenced in their lives by you. So hold on to that, you know? So you guys, you get to make that difference if you want it. How's it feel? Is, it, is the call to action okay? Sorry. That's what you get for coming to my session, you know? I, I, I think the big thing that I see is we have so many alternate, alternatively certified teachers and emergency certified yeah. coming from different areas, and they... And, and a lot of first year teachers when they come in, and I'll go in and say, We have this great STEM lesson, come in and observe yeah. this. And I go in and look, and they're thinking, What they did for technology is their PowerPoint. We got, we're this next the session. next session is supposed to start at 10 30. Yes, it was. Oh, gosh. So, but that, that's what I see, is they, they yeah. think they're integrating. Yes. Things, but they are not. It's not perfect. So, protect it, promote it, find a way to be an advocate. Have a good time. There's there's uh, apparently donuts and water down there, but you have got you got negative seven minutes to get where you're going. So, Thank you. see you guys.